Imagine you are designing a dynamic array. Most insertions are lightning fast. Each of them only takes constant time to run. But suddenly, you have one insertion operation that takes forever to run because it needs to deal with an extreme case when the array is fully occupied. Did the algorithm break? Not really. Here's a twist. Even though some operations take longer to run, the average cost per operation can still be incredibly low. This is where the amortized analysis steps in by giving us the real picture of the performance of one or more operations over time, not just in the worst moment. In this video, we will dive into when amortized analysis is essential and walk you through the aggregate method, one of the simplest yet powerful tools in your algorithm analysis toolbox. So what's amortized analysis and when can it be useful? The amortized analysis is a way to measure the average cost of a sequence of operations. By saying cost, I mean the time it takes to execute an operation. By saying operation, I mean just a method or a function. The insertion operation that we started with is a perfect example. If the insertion operation is executed for a number of times, how expensive is it on average? Should we be using the worst case time complexity to characterize its on time complexity? As you can imagine, most insertion operations will simply take constant time to run, or say their time complexities are all big O of 1. This is somewhat self telling. As long as there are still spots in the array, inserting a new element only takes a single step to complete. However, in rare cases, when the array is full, the insertion operation has to do some extra work before it can insert the given new element. When the array is full, the insertion method has to double the array size first. By saying that, I mean creating a new array that is twice the size of the original array. After that, it needs to copy the existing values from the old array to the new array. In the end, it can insert the given new element. The time complexity in this rare case, or say the worst case, is big O of n, because the process of doubling the size of the data storage and copying all the old elements will take such time. So now you see that the insertion operation of dynamic arrays typically takes big O of 1 time to run, but occasionally requires big O of n time to run, in its worst case. Even though the worst case time complexity is big O of n, it doesn't happen often. It's not a good reflection of what usually happens when you insert many elements one after another into an array. That's why we need the amortized analysis as a way to measure the average time per operation over a sequence of execution, giving us a more realistic understanding of the performance. Without getting to all the technical details yet, let me just say that through some measures, the amortized analysis spreads the cost of occasionally expensive operation to the whole sequence of other operations to make sure the average cost, or say the average time complexity of all these operations, is representative of how much time it takes to run them. Whenever you have a sequence of operations to run, the amortized analysis will always give you a more realistic representation of their time complexity than the worst case analysis. So in comparison to other types of time complexity analysis, the amortized analysis has a more targeted application. It focuses on understanding the average time complexity of a sequence of operations. Now you know what the amortized analysis is and when it can be useful. Let's talk about how it is done. There are three main techniques used in the amortized analysis, including the aggregate method, the accounting method, and the potential method. In this video, we will focus on the aggregate method. The aggregate method is one way to measure the average cost of a sequence of operations. This method achieves the goal by adding up the total cost of a sequence of operations. After that, it divides the total cost by the operation numbers. Translating this description to steps, you will have a guideline of how to use the aggregated method to estimate the amortized cost. The first step is to identify or say consider a sequence of n operations on a data structure. 
The second step is about analyzing the actual cost of all those operations. So you need to add up the worst case time complexity of each worst operation in that sequence and compute the total cost Tn. The third step is to divide the total actual cost by the number of operations. Let's apply these steps to an example to make sense of the aggregate method further. Let's look at an operation on binary numbers. The operation is named increment. So what does this increment operation do? Given an n-bit binary number initialized as all zeros, this operation flips the rightmost bit by adding a single one to that bit. If the rightmost bit is zero, it will be flipped to one. However, if the rightmost bit is one, then the increment operation will not only flip it to zero, but also propagate the carry to the left, which may flip more bits leftward. The number of flips represent the cost of this increment operation. An example of a 4-bit binary counter looks like this. There are 6 columns in total. The leftmost column represents the decimal number, and its neighbor column represents the corresponding binary number with 4 bits. Bit 0, bit 1, 2, and 3. And in these 4 columns, they represent each individual bit of the corresponding number in the same row. They count from the rightmost to the leftmost. So bit 0 represents the rightmost bit, and bit 3 represents the leftmost bit. The first row is the starting point with all four bits as zeros. When the incremental operation adds 1 to the rightmost bit, it will become 1. That will lead to the second row. Now, in the second row, the rightmost bit is 1. If you continue to run the incremental operation, it will flip the rightmost bit, and the carry of 1 will be propagated to the second rightmost bit, and that will lead to row 3. If the incremental operation is run continuously, you will eventually have all the rows that are presented here. As you can see, when the incremental operation is continuously executed, the propagation may lead to different number of flips at each step. The worst case scenario is when all bits are flipped. That happens when you go from the row number 7 to row number 8 in our example. In row number 7, all bits are 1, except for the leftmost one. When the incremental operation is executed, the rightmost bit will flip, and the carry will flip all other bits. That's how you go from the row number 7 to row number 8. In this worst case scenario, the time complexity is big O of n. Remember n here represents the number of total bits. In other cases, the incremental operation takes less and varied time to run. For example, in the case of the first row, the incremental operation takes a single step to run because it only flips one bit. In the case of the second row, the incremental operation takes two steps because it flips two bits. If you have a sequence of incremental operations being executed, what's the average case time complexity per operation? If we use the worst case time complexity, I mean the big O of n, it definitely won't represent the cost accurately. That's where the aggregate method comes into play. To apply the aggregate method to this problem, we will follow the three established steps. The first step is to identify a sequence of n operations. We have already done that by analyzing that example. Just to clarify a bit, the n operations here, that number n has nothing to do with the n bit. They are two totally different numbers. If you think about the example we visited, the bit number can be 4, and the sequence number of the operations can be 8, like this. The second step is to add up all the cost of each operation. We will go with this example here. If we have a 4-bit binary counter and 8 operations, what's the total cost? When we discussed this example, we mentioned that the cost varies across different operations. 
but we didn't explore the pattern. However, we need to know the pattern of how the cost varies to figure out what is the add up to. If you look at the four columns, starting from bit 0 and end with bit 3, you will see that the rightmost bit, I mean bit 0, always flips in each incremental operation. Bit 1 only flips for 4 times across the 8 operations. Bit 2 only flips for 2 times, and the leftmost bit, bit 3, only flips for 1 bit. The pattern here is that when you go from the right bit to the left bit, each bit flips half of the time in comparison to its right neighbor, until it gradually becomes one. So from this example, we can generalize the pattern from 8 operations to n operations, where n is an arbitrarily large number. Like this, given n execution of the incremental operation. The rightmost bit flips for n time, and the second bit flips for n divided by 2 times, and the third n divided by 4 times, and so on. So the total number of flips over n operations is the sum of n and divided by 2 and divided by 4 and divided by 8 until it gradually becomes 1. The summation term is something that we can work with. We can rewrite the formula also as a term to extract the n, and the remaining part will look like this. From here, we can express n as 2 power 2k, like this. k here represents the highest bit position. Based on infinite geometric series, this part in the round bracket can be estimated to a constant number. So the whole summation term can be estimated to a constant number multiplied by n. As a result, we have the total cost of n operations. The second step is done. The third step is to divide the total cost by the operation numbers, which is n. That will lead to big O of 1. When you use n divided by n, that will give you 1. So, the amortized cost per operation is simply constant time. In this video, they covered when the amortized analysis is essential, and how the aggregate method as one of the amortized analysis methods is applied. In the next video, we will cover a different method of the amortized analysis, the accounting method.